Burger secure, number one. <laughs> Not secured. Hey everyone, Joe here. I'm back and today we're making burgers. But not just any burgers, we're making burgers using tools that we found from all over the internet. So we found seven different tools and I'm gonna be evaluating them based on their value, their price, and if they actually make burger making any easier. So I'm gonna do all the work. You guys are here to watch. Let's get started. So I have all my burger making gadgets here. Let's give it a quick run through, see what we have. Meat grinder. Pretty straightforward. Made of plastic, but this is gonna grind our meat, so that way we have a comparison point of what it's like to grind your own burger blend versus having pre-ground meat. We have this nifty little burger patty maker. It comes with these sheets. We got the Burger Master. This is some sort of silicon mat. Pulls apart, make your burgers in here. I'm not sure if these are to make patties, if they're used to hold the burger. We're just gonna have to play around with this one. This little mini indoor griddle. You put your burger in there, get a nice indoor sizzle sear any time of the year. I'm excited to use this one. We have a butter wheel. They're super cool. It butters the bun for perfect toasting. We got the big boy, indoor grill, top and bottom cooking. I mean, what more can you ask for? Let's see if this is gonna be totally worth it. First things first here, let's grind our burger meat. Obviously, you can buy your own burger meat pre-ground. There's nothing wrong with that. But when you're buying pre-ground burger meat, you're only able to control the fat content. So for today, I'm going to be using chuck, sirloin, and short rib. The optimal combination. We got our meat grinder here. First thoughts, it's plastic. In the restaurant, obviously, we would use metal. Metal's better for a number of reasons. It does have the suction cup on the bottom, so it should, in theory, hold in place. Comes with this nifty little tamper, so we're able to push the meat down into the center. I'm optimistic about this. We gotta cut our meat, and I'm just looking for these to be smaller than the hole that we have here so they don't get caught up in the grinder. So let's get our grinder attached to the table. And then in order to keep everything cold and out of the temperature danger zone, I have a bowl sitting on another bowl filled with ice and a little bit of water. Starting with our short rib. All right, here we go. I'm worried this is gonna come flying off the table. We're gonna use a little piece of cling here on top that's going to direct everything down into the bowl. I'm gonna use my other hand to hold this in place just in case because it feels like it's about to come undone. We're looking good. First piece down. Switching arms, definitely getting tired. Go with our little tamper tool, keep our hands safe. All right, this is working surprisingly well. <sighs> the suction cup came undone. Nothing broke, we're still good. This is a workout. You know what's actually nice about this is that the grinder kind of gets stuck. Go backwards a little bit and then you go forward. Let's see what we got here. We got, I mean, it's ground beef. You can still see all the fat scattered throughout the meat, the pink, the white, the red, the separation. And I feel good about turning this into burgers. Let's make some patties. We have a small burger press. We also have the Shape and Store Burger Cutter Maker. I've never seen anything like this and I'm kind of excited to see how this goes. What's interesting about this is that the burgers are not actually round. I've never made hexagon shaped burgers. I'm not sure maybe once they're cooked, they'll form into circular patties, but this will be interesting. I'm not even gonna preform these. I'm just gonna help smear it to the edges, fill up our whole package. Everybody's pressed. This is gonna go right on the top. It should cut, divide, separate, form, and seal all of our burgers. We're gonna go stick this in the fridge, keep it cold till we're ready to cook. We have the burger press. Should, in theory, speed up the burger shaping process. It also comes with these nifty little pre-cut parchment squares, and that way when you press it all together, it pops right out. I'm just gonna eyeball this. I'm gonna guess about a quarter pound. Parchment down first, then we can place our patty meat. Then we can go parchment on top. And then we come in with our handle and our tool. And we're just gonna press this down. Top comes off. Patty comes out, look at that. It does remind me of those uh, pre-made patties you would buy frozen. If you think you know how to tell the top of the patty from the bottom of the patty, let me know in the comments, all right? It's not a trick, there's a right answer. All right, we got patties done, we got patties done. Let's start preheating these griddles and cook some burgers. Starting with this cute little super adorable mini grill. I've had it preheating for about 10 minutes now and it's still 
I could touch it, which is not really a good sign for searing burgers, but you know, it's tiny. I already know right off the bat that other burger press made burgers too big to even fit in here. So I'm not even gonna try it. But our Shape and Store Burger Maker 5000 has smaller size patties. So I think this is gonna work really well in here. So let's see how this goes. Wow. I'm impressed. They tear right off. I'm gonna keep things simple here and just use a little bit of salt. We're gonna go burger right on. We're gonna put the top down. I'm not gonna push too hard. I don't wanna spread it out. We're gonna let the natural weight of the lid do its thing. I'm gonna stick the rest of these aside and wash my hands while this cooks. All right, we're sizzling nicely here. Our burger's cooking. In the meantime, we can get our butter wheel set up and ready to go. You need to melt a large amount of butter to get it into the wheel in the first place. So then it has butter down on the bottom as you turn it. All right, well, I see some caramelization on one side. That means it's cooking. I'm honestly surprised that we're seeing like grow marks on this thing. You know, if you're like in a dorm room or somewhere where you don't have a lot of counter space or maybe you don't have a stove, you're in a studio, a hotel room, this could be your tool. All right, I feel good about this. I think it's time. I'm actually gonna flip this on the opposite side so we can take a look. Oh, all right. We got a nicer caramelization on the top. Ow, it's hot. Be careful. We're gonna go with our uh, bun toasting. But look at this. Do a little rolly action. Oh, we are buttered. We'll go butter side down. It's almost like made for a bun. It's perfect. I wonder if I could, you know what, this might be dangerous, but I live for danger. Don't do this at home. Let's put a warning at the bottom of the screen. I'm gonna take my other half and I'm going to hold it against the grill on the top twice as fast. Oh, check it out. We got grill marks. We got a nice toasty, roasty bun. That worked. For some reason, the top gets hotter than the bottom. The bottom almost toasted. I mean, that's pretty good. I'm happy with that. We got a burger. Let's try the other grill and our other patties. We have our Hamilton Beach indoor grill. Much more space, an entire lid to keep everything contained, less mess on the countertop. We actually have a temperature dial on this thing here. I have this preheating all the way to sear. I feel, I feel heat. We have our patties here. We're doing our larger patties. I'm gonna just peel off our outer parchment. A little bit of salt, that's all we're using today. Grill feels hot. Shall we do this? We go right there. Patty two. We're gonna go a little salt on the opposite side. I'm gonna close the lid, see how that works. I think that'll also help create a warmer environment, almost like you're in an outdoor grill, turning this into a hot box oven type situation. All right, I'm ready for a flip. Flip number one, we have absolutely no crust on the burger. There's a couple of little grill marks on there, but not ideal. Not the best, not the worst. We could use our little butter roller here again, one of my favorite tools. I'm gonna do a little griddle there. Buns are toasting, let's grab some cheese. I'm gonna go on to one burger with cheese. We have all of our buns, let's take a look. First round, oh, beautiful. I think we're just about ready here, oh yeah. That's gonna be our plane. We're gonna throw the lid down, melt the cheese. You know what we could do? Maybe this is cheating, maybe it's not. I'm gonna do it anyway. I got a little bit of water here. Creates steam, which helps cheese melt. <gasps> cheese is melted. Burger is cooked. We have all of our samples ready to go. All that's left to do is assemble and taste. We've made it this far. We've tested out almost all of the burger gadgets. There's only one left to try. It is these cozy little burger holders. Before we get there, I have my burger toppings here. I'm a big fan of spread. It's got the mustard, it's got the pickles, it's got the ketchup, it's got a little bit of mayo. Got this nice little bib lettuce. That'll go down on top of the spread. Patty's next. One thinly sliced tomato. Last but not least, some thinly sliced onion. Totally optional if you wanna grill your onion. I support that decision. Check that out. We just made some burgers all indoor. Looking mighty fine. We have these little burger holders. If there's one thing I would want to improve these holders is a flat bottom. So that way you can set it down and it doesn't rock back and forth. But you know, let's see what happens. And we might have to smoosh it just a little bit to get it to fit. All right, secure, burger secure, number one. <laughs> Not secured. 
Then I squish a little bit, just a little squish, not a lot of squish. Okay, it's a lot of squish, which I don't love. I don't like smashing my burger to get it into a holder. So this is our first burger here. This was cooked on the mini little dash red oven. I'm not upset by that, but you know what? I still got spread on my finger, even with the little burger holder. But all in all, beautiful burger. Now we gotta try the meat that we ground ourselves and cooked on the Hamilton Beach Grill. That's this one right here. I'm telling you, grinding your own meat, it's the way to go. So much more flavor. Even that hand cranked meat grinder, that was kind of a pain to work with. Totally worth it now at this point. And you know what? These buns, let me tell you, with that butter roller, makes the buns taste quite magnificent. Let's review all of the gadgets that we just used. I have no idea how much any of these costs, so we're gonna find out in real time and we'll reevaluate based on our criteria, the value, whether it actually made burger making easier and the price on a scale of one to five. Let's do our uh, super smasher 5,000. What is the price on this? $25. $25, that is a rip off. I'm gonna rate this a, a two. A two only because it worked. If it didn't work, it would have been a one. Our smash handle. This is sturdy, it's metal. My guess is $12. $12.99. $12.99, put me on the prices right. Four out of five on this one. It worked, it was efficient. If you're looking to make a whole bunch of patties, I could see this being useful. Moving down the list, let's go meat grinder here. My guess on the price here, $34.99. $29.95. Close, okay. I wanna give it a four. It works, it's great, it's kind of a pain, but if it was anything more than $30, it would be a three. Our little red dash grill, it's still a little warm. My guess here for this thing, $29.99. $11.99. $11.99, holy, look at that. I'm gonna give it a three. The price is great, but I mean, come on. Do you really need a little mini thing like this? Next, oh, our butter wheel. Um, it's efficient, it works. This is like what you would find at a restaurant supply store. $18.99. Nailed it, five out of five stars. Next, uh, our big grill. Did not do a great job with our caramelization. I'd rather use a pan. My guess, we're looking at, I wanna say at least $49.99. $69.99. For me, that's expensive. I don't think that's worth it at all. I'm gonna give it a two. It's fine, it's okay, but why would you not just use a pan? Burger Buddies, a four pack has gotta be like $4.99. $14.59. <laughs> what? Why? I give this a zero. Zero. And that brings us to the end. All of these burger gadgets we found on the internet. If you had fun, thank you all for watching. I wanna know what you wanna see me review next. There's tons of gadgets out there all over the internet. Let me know down in the comments below. Give me a follow on Instagram or here on YouTube. I'm Chef Joe Sasto and thank you for watching.